order. Please stand for the invocation and the pledge. Ms. Prowant will give our invocation tonight. Father God, I thank you for uh, loving us and keeping us safe and, and close to you. I, and most of all, Lord, I thank you for the holiday that we've just celebrated, the birth of your son, and um, just the fact that you were willing to send him to um, earth to be a sacrifice for our sins. Lord, help us to um, appreciate that as we go about our daily lives and respect the fact that just because our sins are forgiven doesn't mean that we don't need to be diligent in, in our actions. And we praise you um, for everything that you've done for us. Lord, as we enter into this time of our board meeting, I ask that you um, guide us and direct us. Uh, remind us constantly that it's our responsibility to do what's best for the children of Glades County. And we need to keep that in mind as we discuss <coughs> and make decisions this evening. Thank you for all of those that are here and keep them safe as we go home after the meeting. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Before we're seated, can we just have a quick um, moment of silence? for the school in Iowa where they have the school shooting. That's really been on my heart today. And if everybody just take a moment of silence and pray for those folks. Amen. Amen. Thank you. All right, we're going to begin the meeting tonight with uh, new business number 2.1, discussion of proposed lease prepared by the Glades County Economic Development Council. Dr. Barfield, would you like to start us out on that, or how do you want to proceed with this? I do know, I do want to note, we do have Mr. Kaus here who did come to answer any questions that any board members may have, um, so he is here and available. He did fill out a comment card, um, so please know that he's available if you have any questions. Well, I think we should probably let board members, if they have any questions or comments, and then um, if Mr. Kaus wants to go ahead and go up to the podium, okay. if, if, what, if he's comfortable with that, and then okay. directly answer it. Sounds good. Welcome. Thank you. Um, I do write a couple notes so I don't tend to wander, which I often do with, with, with speaking. Um, I'm Andrew Kaus, Chairman of the EDC. Um, I'm here tonight to represent the EDC Board and uh, to speak in support of the Board adopting this amendment to the 99-year lease for Block 118, or better known as the southern half of the Child Acre Grounds. Um, I'm pleased to report that the EDC Board unanimously voted in favor of this amendment to the lease last night at a special meeting. I think this, this amendment addresses two major items between both organizations, that being the need for the 50 feet for the construction of the school and the clarification of the EDC, replacing the chamber as the tenant on the lease. Um, I personally would have liked to have reached this point between us much sooner. Um, I believe this puts us in a, all po a positive place to move forward. Uh, I recognize there have been many varied opinions and intense emotions by different individuals on both sides and with both organizations and even those outside of either organization. But I want to say I truly believe all involved have operated in good faith and to the best of their um, intentions doing what they believe is best to represent their position or their organization uh, in these discussions. I also want to say that I give you my commitment from the EDC side to work willingly and openly with you for any other issues that may be may arise in the future in regards to the lease or uh, use of grounds or any of and I think the the existing lease provides ample mechanisms for us to address uh, any such issues in the future as well as the mechanism like this one to uh, amend that lease um, 
I just, I want to wish you all the best. I hope we can all move forward. I know you've got a school to build, and EDC wants to focus on getting the next Chapman Lake going and, uh, and, and working on attracting businesses and or growing businesses in Blades County. So I think this is a good place to be. Like I said, I wish we'd have gotten here sooner, but uh, hopefully we can all move forward positively together. And I'm available. I'm at your disposal. So. Thank you very much, Andrew. And I appreciate the, um, the conversations that we've had. And um, I appreciate your openness and willingness to listen to my concerns. And um, I think that, it, you know, I hope that you and I will continue our professional relationship long after this evening. So if anybody wants to start the discussion, please go right ahead. Or I can open whoever wants to. You might as well go ahead. Okay. Go on in the next weekend. All right. We'll just go down the road. Okay. Yeah. You sure you don't want to go first? I'm positive. Okay. <laughs> so um, I am ready to sign the agreement that the EDC prepared for us. Um, it doesn't, I had suggested some things that I wanted to see added to the lease, which I don't know who prepared that document, but um, the EDC saw the recommendations that I wanted and they really weren't interested in changing the bones of the agreement, the original 1985 agreement. Uh, I did attend their last meeting um, and my impression is that if we do not approve this tonight that if we send it back with a tweak here and a tweak there, I don't believe that it will pass their board, is my impression. Um, and so for that reason, I would like to, even though it doesn't have everything I wanted in it, I'm willing to set that aside. Uh, one of the things at our last workshop was when Mr. Gresset said we were six to eight months behind on construction because of this, is that correct? Yes. Six to eight. That blew my mind. I was, I, I had no idea that this issue had stopped our progress. I mean, we had set an opening date for school, which was what, August, what year? 26? 25. 25. So that means we're already now going to be into possibly January of that school year. And I, I felt that night in the meeting, there was a lot of tension. There was a lot of um, accusations on both parts. Um, and I just, I just want to put this behind us. And I think it's in the best interest of our school district moving forward to have a positive working professional relationship with EDC. They actually gave us a letter of support for the new school. It was part of our portfolio and our package. And I think for us to go to war with them over what they've given, they have given what we asked for. We asked for 50 feet. They've conceded it. They're going to give it to us, which is what we wanted. Um, and I just think, I think about that school and all the money we're putting in that roof over there. And I'm like, we have got to get this school built as soon as possible and get those kids out of there. We can't keep putting money in that school. This $60,000 to fix a leaky roof that's not going to fix the leaky roof is blowing my mind. And when I look at our fund balance, which I have copies of that for everybody, I don't think we can financially afford a lawsuit. I think that we need to take the high road as it's been suggested to me and just move forward and put this behind us and build our school. Our other option that I see, I see we have two options. We go with what they're saying and we, you know, tuck our tails or however people are seeing it. I don't care how they're seeing it, but we either do that or we move the cafeteria to the other location. I do not want to move forward with a construction project with this clouded issue. I don't think it's prudent to start planning and submit plans to the state and start building with this thing not resolved. And it could take, Mr. McKinley, correct me if I'm wrong, at least six months to get a resolution should we pursue it further. 
Uh, Mr. McKinley also advised me that in his opinion, there's about a 60% chance that we would win a lawsuit. That's not good enough for me. I do not want to sever relationship with EDC, who is the, the business communities of our, the business organizations of our community. They're the backbone of this community. And I don't believe that we can afford to sever that relationship over 50 feet that they're willing to give us. I, I, I just, I, I think we either need to move, change our plan and not use the 50 feet or we need to sign this agreement. And I feel like if we do anything other than one of those two, it's gonna cost the district money and it's gonna push back our open day. Would you be willing to tell us what those things were that you asked for that they were not willing to consider? Yes, I had mentioned things like um, a two months lease out of 12 months. Like it would start prior to Chalanitka about one month prior and then go to about one month after. And then we would have the use of the, of the property on the off season. I asked that um, the superintendent be provided a copy of the insurance on a specific date every year. Um, what else, Dr. Marfield? Um, do, you, do you recall anything? You didn't want anything left. I can pull it up. Let me. Well, that agreement essentially was a replacement for the lease and that right. was the biggest issue right that that our organization had yeah it was a complete way, pretty much rewrite of it and they were not interested in that they 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 wanted That's to the um certificate of insurance oh okay insurance. okay um i'd like to see that that's one of my biggest questions okay it's a two million dollar liability that names the county, the city, the school board, the EDC, and the Chalanica committee. For, sure. for Chalanica itself? Mm -hmm. What about all the other things that take place? Other e events out there? Rodeos, junior rodeos, high school rodeos? It's, it's attached under the city's general liability, which is an agreement we came to with the city several years ago when it became cost prohibitive for us as an independent organization to purchase the insurance in our name alone. That, that was one of my biggest things, and now I'm skipping Kim. That's okay. okay. Um, the subleasing, it says strictly in, in, in the original agreement mm -hmm. that there was no subleasing. And there has never been a sublease. Okay. So there has been an allow, there was some agreements made with, with the ride operator to allow them to store some equipment and use some other uses of the facility, which, you know, uses of the facility were part of the, that lease for the tenant. Just, I mean, that's no more of a sublease than when someone uses the well, building. I understand that, but I'm talking about two and three rodeos that are not taking place during Chalnica time. Well, they're not on Block 118. My grandson said that he was in the arena. I know, but the arena's not yeah, the, the arena is, is youth livestock. Okay. This lease refers only to the that, that, southern that, half of the Chalcedon. I Chalcedon understand, I understand. I was just, I have to pack, right. park on it. They, you know, I was just wondering about that. So who has the insurance? Let's say, for example, okay. at night, a group of kids go over there on four-wheelers or scooters or whatever, and they're racing around and somebody gets killed or seriously hurt who has the liability insurance for that that would be under the city's policy blanket policy and the city and, and and you know in context this agreement doesn't exist alone there's an actual identical lease word for word for block 117 so block 117 would be the part the block that the when all this was being done in the early 80s, the county deeded Block 117 to the city. The city entered into the identical lease with the chamber at the time so that Block 118 and 117 could be put together for the use of the Chalonica grounds. So the part of the Chalonica grounds that has all the, the chickies and the, the concrete pavilion building, that's on Block 117 owned by the city. So it all operates together as one piece of property between the two leases. So it's, it's, it's important to realize this doesn't exist 
in yeah. isolation. And there was a 99-year lease with the city and the, and and the, the chamber. EDC or the chamber. It's an identical lease, virtually word for word. Have they the ever tried to update their No, lease? but uh, coming out of this, they have, they have recognized us as the successor by default. Um, we haven't had a formal agreement, but uh, if, if, we, if we're successful tonight, it uh, would be my intention to, just so that everything's consistent, to do a similar agreement with them that simply clearly identifies us as the successor tenant to the, uh, to the chamber. And I, and I understand that there are arguments that they are the successor, but, or that they are not. There's arguments for both sides. Um, and and honestly, there's there are good arguments on both sides to me. So to give it to a, a judge to decide, it, you know, because it's the same people that run the EDC that used to run. I mean, not the same individuals, but the same businesses that are, you know, 80% of their base is the same entities. It's First Bank, it's Lex Brothers, it's U.S. Sugar, it's, you know, it may not be the same faces of people, but it's it's the same group. It's, I, under, I understand, and I want to do whatever we can do to move forward. I mean, I, I don't want to throw, this is fine with me, that the whole thing didn't have to be rewritten, just so we can move forward right now, but I want to revisit it in the future. I would well, really, uh, I would, uh, sorry, um, Wait, you know, down the line. After I, I the school the bill. whole thing, <laughs> yeah, everything needs to be just rehashed out because in the contract it says education first, the land use, all of our land, and even in the contract, the land use is supposed to be for education first. And as we need it, and we might need it more, different properties that we own, not just that one, we just need to make clear with whatever uses are being used now that we can one maybe one day have to build a classroom on that property. So I mean education first. Okay, that, Kim, that, she kinda I mean, skips it. Says, are you are you still going? I am. Okay. Through. You can have another turn after her if you forget if you remember something. Go ahead, Kim. I just want to thank you for coming and speaking to us. And um, I am very thankful that everything on here is exactly what we asked for. We asked for the fifty B and you agreed to that. Um, I see here also seeing that you said you're more than willing to work with us afterwards. Um, updates, Mr. Solowski said that there's state law that we're not in the lease that needs to be updated. So if we can move forward with tonight and work together, you know, every time there's something that needs to be updated or amended on these leases, not just with the EDC, make sure that we are keeping up on our part for these documents. So I am in favor of tonight's documents. Me too. I just wanted to move forward as easily as possible. Well, I think, you know, the lease called for an executive committee with one member appointed by the board, one by the tenant, and one, and the corresponding lease with the city calls for the same thing, so that there would actually be a three-person committee comprised of a city member, of a school board member, and a tenant member EDC in place of the chamber now. But I think that's something we should reactivate as a mechanism to answer questions, to deal with issues. You know, know that's why I say the lease, call, the lease has, the, has the mechanisms for us to cooperate. And, and you know, it, quite honestly, it's just got a bit on the shelf and out of everybody's mind until, until about this last year. So. Yeah, because what, what's written in there and what we're doing is just completely different. From what I think, not not this, but the whole lease as a whole. Okay, Jenny. Um, one thing I'd like to ask, and I'm not sure. Well, I'm am sure. This is this is from Florida Carnival and more, and naming the school district as an additional insured just for the Chalnica Festival. Wouldn't it be appropriate that the school would receive a certificate of insurance for the rest of the year from someone? That was the question that Mrs. Pierce raised. About she the was other, asking uh, about different properties. I meant no, about... Uh, well, but other activities, parking for other, other activities, Everything. there's liability for that as well. Yeah, but only on Block 118. But, I mean, who should be giving that to the district? We should be getting it from someone. 
I think. So and and, and it may no be covered under ours. Mm -hmm. Under should our we policy. Have we should be have some Yeah, I think we should have it too. <laughs> well, well, that, that, that specifically is the insurance for the festival itself. Right. But, so we'd have to get from the city the Right. Copy we should be named. <coughs> For the rest of the last I don't, period. I don't have that one with yeah, me. I know. I've had that one, but I, as far as I understand, that has been done. Okay. On the general policy as well. Okay. Well, I'd like to, but, for us to have that because then we know for sure. Because, I mean, it's 365 days a year, not right. just two. And I think we should be covered as the property owner. Um, I'm glad we're here. This is where we. This could have been so simple to start with. I don't really understand how it got so convoluted on all of our parts. Um, and if everybody else is comfortable with it, I'm comfortable with it to this point. I'm thankful that it was been able, it's been able to be worked out. Um, but I want to see some insurance. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to make some comments um, because I think that the public needs to know how I feel. And um, nothing that I say is directed to anybody personally, not to you, Andrew, or, or anybody else. Um, I just feel, I'm like Jenny, this should have been handled a long time ago. We went to the EDC with our request a long time ago. I don't, I don't know exactly when. October, I believe. Okay. Well, I believe. It might have been 23 or 22. Yeah, over a year ago. Mm -hmm. Well, that's irregardless. It was a long time ago. Um, and it was like. The EDC, and I use that term as a group, I don't know if it was certain individuals or if it was the whole group, I, I can't address that. They dug their heels in. We're not given anything. We're not even going to talk to you about it. I know there was, I hope it's okay with Ms. Dr. Barfield that I share this with her, but she was having a conversation with one of the members very nice, very friendly, how's everything going? And as soon as she brought this topic up, it was roll the window up and drive away. They, they didn't want to talk, uh, you know? And I, I really think, I may be totally wrong, but I'm gonna say it anyway, I think there were some people in the EDC that did not like the location we picked for the school, and so they were gonna fight us all the way. They had other ideas where the school should go, and, and so they just dug their heels in. That's the only expression I can think of. We have a responsibility to do what's best for Blades County students, and that should be our number one concern. Yes, we support Chalanica. We ride in the Chalanica Parade. I, for years, I've taken my grandchildren to the carnival and walked around in the dust and watched them ride the rides. <laughs> I met um, my husband there. <laughs> and they're finally old enough to kind of go by themselves now. Um, so, you know, I'm all for Chalanica. I don't want to hurt Chalanica. But, but we, the current board and the future board and the board of the past, should always have what's best for the students of Blades County as their number one concern. I can't imagine in 1985 being a member of this board and agreeing to give up the use of our property that we owned for 99 years, not knowing what was going to happen 20 years, 30 years, 40 years, or 99 years down the road. In, in 2084, there may not even be a Chalamitka. We don't know. I hope there is, but I won't be around to see it. Um, I don't, there may be one or two in this room that will be around in 2084, but most of us will be long gone. And, um, so, so that board made a decision that affects a long time in the future and a lot of people. If I had my way, 
we would rewrite this lease and we would write it for 10 years or five years or, or you know, and then readdress it every time it comes up and let's continue to let Chalanitka use that property. But let's not commit, like Patty said, we might need to build a classroom on that property in 30 years, but our hands are tied because somebody made a decision in 1985 that's going to affect the future of this district. So that has nothing to do with adopting this uh, amendment that you're proposing, but I needed to share my feelings about that. I feel really strongly about that. Um, so the other question I have, that the amendment that you have presented to us still refers to it as an interlocal agreement. And is, my question is, is the EDC a governmental agency? No, we're not. Uh, because that, I think the law says that an, interlo uh, an interlocal agreement by definition is between two governmental units. I, I, that language just comes because that's the title of the actual lease, an interlocal agreement and lease. Well, so I think it's a misnomer. It, it, <laughs> I can't, I can't argue that one way or the other. But to reference the document, I have to, you have to call it the title that the document is. Right. If that was incorrect, you know, in '85, I, you know, there's not much I can do about that. That's some of the stuff we're going to read. And then last, the last thing I'm going to say is about the successor of the chamber thing. And I agree with Crystal. It's the same businesses that were part of the chamber, <coughs> although I think. Didn't they operate concurrently for a while? Wasn't there a chamber and an EDC? Oh, absolutely. The so EDC, it wasn't like the EDC took over when the chamber... Who took over all of the functions related to Chalanica. Okay. And, and, and that, that began occurring late November in 2007. The, the EDC had existed long before that. We, just didn't, we were not involved in sponsoring or, or the, the festival. Uh, by the November in 07, and this most of this comes from City of Moorhaven minutes uh, of that time, the chamber was basically in operate, out of operation. Um, right. You know, it's not like they formally dissolved or anything. They just kind of ran out of money and, and faded away. Uh, so in the scramble to put on the 2008 Chalnicka, the EDC stepped in. We eventually were moved into the business. They transferred the phone number so that the EDC staff could answer the chamber's phone number in leading up to Chalnicka. We, the, the, the EDC fronted money to a committee to organize the festival for that year. And um, that's, that's kind of how we got started. So yes, it's, it's successor by action, um, not any kind of formal declaration that occurred where right. the chamber resolved or we merged or we, you know, anything like that. So there's no legal documents, no written document at all that says the EDC is, success, is succeeding the Chamber of Commerce. Only, only, no, only the actions since 2008. Right. But you, the EDC took those actions. It, it was never a legal thing. I, I've seen some of the minutes from the city mm -hmm. where this was discussed, but it was never formally agreed or voted on or assigned or whatever the correct word is. Not that I'm aware of. Okay. And Jean, your idea, that was in, in our original proposal of five I think it was a five-year renewable is what it was called but they weren't they weren't interested and, in that you know that just makes sense to me I, it, I feel I still feel like the EDC and I'm not saying you or you or whoever I can only address it as a whole there it almost seems like they're still fighting us they're, they're conceding this but they're still fighting us they still want rights to that land 50 years from now and and i think makes um, no sense to me i think Jean, that in back in the original this is my impression that 
they basically gave the property. When you do a 99-year lease, you're giving away your rights to the property because you know in 99 years you're not going to be there. And it's a way of deeding a piece of property to someone without literally deeding it. A 99-year lease means you can have this. That's the, that's the intention. Sure it is. And, and so their intention was we, the school board, I guess, I think I saw the document where someone might have given us that piece of land. I'm not even sure we'd pay for it. Do you remember that, Dr. Barfield? There was a warranty deed. I don't think the, the district paid a lot of money. I think someone gave it to the district, and then they gave it to the Chalanica Festival, not necessarily to the chamber or to EDC. They donated it to the community forever for the festival home because they'd been uprooted. You know, when I was a kid, it was where our soccer kids play. And, and then all of a sudden that, you know, the jail and all that. And so they were trying to make a place, a permanent place where they'd never be uprooted again. Is, is what I, I, I feel like that must have been the intention. Here, we've got this piece, we're not using it, probably never gonna need it, it didn't cost us much, let's just give it to John Nick. And even that way. And it didn't happen, like you said, it didn't happen in isolation. There was an yeah. agreement between the city and the county to lease the county the area where they built the jail behind the courthouse. There was agreements involved in creating the ball fields that exist today. There's agreements to create the child acre grounds and by which the county gave the city block 117 and then that by the city and this block by the school board was leased to the chamber at the time for the to construct because they're you know the lease talked about the need to you know this would all go away if the construction didn't actually occur within certain timelines you know, to build the pavilion and, and all the facilities that are there today. So, I mean, it was, this was just one piece of a broad orchestration of transfers of properties and leases and interlocal agreements and, and everything else that, that all came together to create the Child Naked Festival, the county jail, the, the current ball fields, and I think there, there are even some other elements that were in play over, you know, 82, 83, as this started, it was finally consummated in 85. You know, the chamber was open again after that. Okay. Dr. Barfield, did you want to add? Are you finished, Ms. Perlon, or did you have more? I, I, no, I, I'm finished. Okay. Um, I've got a couple questions, and then I'm going to allow for a public comment, and then I'll do my recommendation. Okay. Um, my first question is, does the EDC, are they, they are responsible for Chalanica? We are one of the sponsors of Chalanica, yeah. I mean, Chalanica has always been an effort between youth livestock, used to be the chamber, now the EDC, the city, the county, the schools. I mean, there's the whole community is, is part of putting on Chalanica and various components. But the EDC has, since 2008, filed for the official fair permit. Um, to, to host that festival, which it is a fair, so you have to have a fair permit from the state right. to put on a fair festival. And we still are today. Okay, so I, well, I guess my question is, if we, you're saying that if we do not sign this agreement, agreement that you submitted and that you unanimously voted on, that you are not gonna give us the 50 feet you're saying in order for us to for you all to give us the 50 feet we have to sign that we that you were the successor correct well i think that's be required for us to grant you the 50 feet i didn't see that in there at all no it is there it says it in the the, the, the wording that it if, says right here yeah for us to sign the for us to sign this, it's stating that we are naming them successor. And they put on Chalanica. I mean, why which, would it Which be formalizes there? what has been the, the reality since 2008 for, this will be the 16th <laughs> festival mm -hmm. that we have served in the role that we took over from the chamber. So you we're simply form, we're formalizing what is the reality today. 
you file for the fair permit. Mm -hmm. What other responsibilities for cha the chamber does, or for the Chalanitka does the EDC handle? Well, we have the, the organizing committee, the, the Chalanitka committee. And that's okay. part of the EDC? Yes. And they do the parade, they do the bass tournament, they do the kids' day. So all, all of the organizational yeah. Yeah. activities are coordinated by that committee. And those are members of the EDC. Mm -hmm. How does someone become a member of the EDC? Pay dues. But I mean, how do they get to be on the board? Of so anybody in the public can be an EDC member. At our annual at our annual meeting, the slate of directors. We have a rotating slate. It's usually three-year terms, so about a third of the board is up each year at our annual meeting and dinner, and we elect new board members. Aren't you a board member? Huh? Are you a board member? He's chair. Uh, no, oh, me. No, I am since, when was I a <coughs> member? I don't know. When we realized that this uh, this meeting or this um, mm -hmm. lease exists and it said on there that somebody should be on um, the oh. EDC. It doesn't say EDC. It no, says it says on, on the, the commi special committee. committee. And I don't think this is, that's the committee. But yeah, I think I, that was my fault. I misinterpreted that part mm -hmm. of the lease because I felt like the special committee was the EDC board. And so if you all remember, that's when I came and said, we need to have representation on the EDC board because the lease says that we're supposed to be, have a seat at the table when it comes to the Chalnica grounds because and so that's when Dr. Barfield assumed that nobody else wanted to do it. I didn't feel like I should do it because I brought it up. I didn't want to look like I was self-serving, you know, hey, we need to be on the board. I'll do it. You know, so I, you know, she said she would do it. I honestly, at this point, feel like she, maybe it's, maybe we should just do the special committee and not, it's a lot for you to attend those meetings. Maybe we don't need, I don't know. I just know that was my fault. I misunderstood. I do know that there, your board does say that you have a school board representative. Right. We, we have, a, we have a, yeah. a, a standing slot on the board for a school board representative, yes. a city commission representative, a county commission okay. representative. And, and we, we also have the county manager and city manager. And we were active when Mike was here. Mike was at all the meetings anyway, so mm -hmm. we haven't been active at any time. And the way that I'm reading this is that we're recognizing them in order for them to give us the 50 feet. It's not trickery. Is it? Or, well, I don't, I mean, I don't. Hmm? I'm not the expert on trickery. Okay. Yeah, okay. <laughs> well, well, I yes, we are. are the I mean, that we are recognizing them as the leasing. And that they're giving it in, in order for them to give right. it to us, we have to recognize them. That's so that's just, it. That's all I'm seeing. Yeah, that's what she's saying. It might be. Can I make a comment? Sure, please do. It is my view that even if the board accepts each and every business term of this document, this doesn't do it. I, I don't. I'm not comfortable with the language about reciting what we're doing here making it clear that we're settling a dispute that I think that's extremely important and I and I I don't think that the conveyance language in paragraph two does it I think that we'd have a hard time getting title insurance on that I have some reservations about it so if it is the business decision of the board to accept this deal lock stock and barrel it needs to be rewritten that's where I'm at But that's another delay. Yeah. You, that's my middle name, is I delay. Well, I, 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 I was just I'll wear it with for pride. Us to be able to move forward and, and, and revisit. We, we have another meeting on Friday. Okay. You know, you could tell Mr. Delay and Expense to go and rewrite it to satisfy himself, including the all important title insurance, marketable title type issue. Okay. So we can move on. Can I but, ask what the invoice is so far from your company on oh, what we've I have done no so idea. Far? I honestly have no idea. No idea. I have a You question. can ask. We can get it for you, but I don't know right now. So I, I have a question. Is um, the challenge of finance, financials, is that available for anyone to see? Is that open to the public? No. Um, yeah. 
I'm, I mean, we can do public comments, and then I'm ready to make mine. I've already made my comments. So. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Lundy. Um, <clears throat> I'm sorry I was late. That's all I was talking about. Thank you. <clears throat> I just, when I was sitting there, I just wanted to ask a few questions. So I went and filled out the form in case I got to this point and I could ask my questions. What is the disadvantage to the EDCs if none of this is signed? How do they hurt? I, I don't know if you can answer that, but what? It hurts us. We don't have our 50 feet to start a construction. You don't? No. You have to have. We you have to have something with the organization which is, that didn't exist in that which is, contract. Which began. is a whole other thing. Yeah, I'm sorry, I, I missed the first 15 in the minutes. So contract. If you look at the contract, it's education first, and, and and we have not only the right, we have the duty. Yeah. So, to, some of the words I heard y'all say was to revisit, do things for revisit. education. What are the what's the likelihood you revisit any of this and get? Anything else out of it? It's it's just some T's yeah, that I have to think I's that have to be dotted and T's have to be crossed and some insurance verification and some things that have to be in this contract. And building those you. relationships back throughout our community, I feel like that's the most important is building those relationships back with everybody. Okay, we've broken relationships but, for definitely. wanting fifty that yes. yes. belongs to us yes. for a deal yes. that we made. Yes. In 1985 with a corporation yes yes um, and I think what you're referring to is if we were if we sign this and we revisit it later I don't see it happening quite honestly you don't see anything I don't, else happening I don't see revisit. I don't see a revisit even happening. Well, I didn't either so <laughs> my question is rhetorical uh, at this point I don't think I would because I heard two or three people say that Revisit, and I'm thinking, what on, what on earth can happen if we revisit this? Nothing. So there really can't be any substantive revisit, uh. is what I'm asking. Okay. I'm All sorry. Right. But, well, we don't have the answers. No, and I'm, you know, I don't, I hate well, that I'm getting up here not having heard, you know, the few minutes that I missed. So okay. let me, let me respond a little bit to that from my perspective. Okay, thank you. Um, it would be nice if we could say, okay, let's sign this, and that way we can move forward with the school, place the school where it needs to be for the best advantage for the kids and for the future of the school, because we're talking about having space to add a wing to the school in the future if needed or not, depending on whether we get this 50 feet or not. It would be nice to say, okay, we'll agree to this so we can move forward, but can we at some point revisit the lease and perhaps change it from 99 years to a five-year renewal or, or something like that? I think with the current members of the EDC, that's never going to happen. It's never going to be revised. We're stuck with it. Now, maybe... 20 or 30 or 40 years down the road, there'll be a whole new group of people in the EDC. They may see things differently, but right now, I think these people who have dug their heels in, they don't like where we're building the school, and they're not going to concede anything else to us. That's my opinion. Um, I appreciate your thought, Ms. Rowan. And I know you've done some homework, so I appreciate that. Very much. I, I don't have any more questions at this time. I may be one of the only people that wishes a decision would not be made tonight. And um, that, and the deal about not being able to go forward unless this happens, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not sure that's true. <laughs> I mean, I'm not either. Well, well, I, I, I don't, mean, I don't feel we, comfortable with that, you know, that, okay, let's make a decision because we've got to go forward. Yeah, but let me, let yeah. me say this. We can't go forward as we've already spent money and we've already laid it out. Yes, we could rearrange everything at an additional huge cost and then we could not use that part. But here we are. Yeah, Can I agree with you. Can you respond to that, Brian? That's the question. I, the restroom, I'm sorry. <laughs> the cost 
the additional cost, I think, is the question. If we move the cafeteria so that we don't need the 50 feet, what is the cost? What is that going to cost us? Is that the question? Yeah. I think yeah. that's anything. It's not built. If, well, if yes, to redraw, is. to redraw the design. We've got a whole bunch done. Actually, actually we can we can build with the cafeteria where it is. But what happens is it becomes a difficulty for unloading semis, and also it's going to take away parking from from the school. If we were to build the the, the cafeteria on the south side of the property, which I'm not recommending. Really, it's going to take away a lot of your possibilities for expansion, school expansion, because now you're going to be, you're going to have a school, and you're going to have a cafeteria, and then you're going to have another building. So in order to, in order to get from one place to another, they're going to have to go through the cafeteria. Mm -hmm. It's an L-shaped piece of property right now. So it's best if the cafeteria is on the north side and not on the south side, because I think that you're really limiting the possibility of expansion, and that school's going to be there for 50 years. So I would think that in 50 years, we may need another building. So uh, that's that's the reason. And as far as, as time, you mentioned time, really we are not in a time constraint right now because we, we have to get a survey done, which I explained at the last meeting. We have to get a survey done about storm, storm drainage, water drainage, all that stuff. It's going to take at least six months for that to happen. I did talk to the, the um, architect. The architect said if we go forward with the plan that we're in right now, that we with the 50 feet, that if six months from now when that survey comes back, we find out that now we can't have that property, um, it won't take that long for an amendment to South Florida Water Management. Um, so it's not going to back us up time-wise that much with the, with the building of the new school. Okay, you lost me at the very end there. Could you repeat that? Yes, we have to do a survey right now for stormwater drainage. And that has to go to South Florida Water Management. That we and haven't it, started yet. We haven't started yet. Okay. Well, that's, it's, it's actually are we waiting on this decision no, to start that? What are we waiting on? We, we were waiting on the decision on, you know, should we go ahead and do the survey with the 50 feet? And so we've decided that we are going to do it with the 50 feet um, in the hopes that we're able to, to do that because that's going to be most beneficial for the school. But if, if at some time we find out that we can't get the 50 feet, then we can make an amend amendment to that. So it's not, it's not stretching us out right now. So our, our, time, our, our, our time right now is, is on track. It's but, not on track the way we want it to be. But if they say, if South Florida Water Management's permitting process comes back and says, okay, we're going to approve you with the 50 feet, meanwhile, we haven't decided on the 50 feet. Let's imagine. say we don't get the 50 feet. Let's say we drag this out some more and we end up not getting it. Then they've got to start a new one. No. To redraw well, I asked without them, no, the 50. There's okay. an amendment. They'll, they'll just be looking at that 50 feet. They don't have to look at the whole footprint because the footprint's going to stay the same. The only thing that's changing is on the east side of where the school property is going to be, and that's going to be where the the driveway is going to be. But you don't think that's going to from what be the architect problem. said, it's not going to be a huge problem. No. Time. -wise. That's what we said. Let's go ahead and go with it. Why, why at the workshop did you tell us we were six to eight months behind? What was that hold up? What, what were we not doing well, then? That was, that was part of making the decision whether we're going to go forward with trying to do the survey. The survey. The okay. So it was just we hanging there waiting. We're going to do it one way or another. So, yeah. so we're going to go and we're going to tell South Florida Water Management, here's plan A. Here's plan B. We're not doing, no, we're just saying this is plan this A. This is plan if A. If plan A doesn't work, then we'll have to amend plan A. Yes. Once you get the permit, you amend it. Yeah. And it's a much shorter time. And that's why I asked, because at first I thought we'd have to start all over again. 
So the architect says no because of because the footprint isn't going to change. The building, the building is still going to sit the same way. All that's going to change is the drive driveway okay. and the parking. Okay. Um, I know I was entitled to three minutes. I just want to say I did not talk for three minutes. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I'm getting ready to sit down, and I wanted to say that maybe in 2006, 7, 8, when the chamber ceased to exist, it might have been a blessing that we could have been able or were able to get out of a 99 year, 99 year lease. Mm -hmm. So think about that. That might have been when history was changed, it could be changed. Well, and, and it can be sublet by another company. That's Thank in you. the contract I'm reading right now. All of you. You're Thank right. You very much. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mr. Humphreys. Uh, there's, there's one thing that you need to, in, in construction, your start date may move. Your finish date should never move. If you look at construction, the start date, they'll back you up. A lot of things can happen, but that end date needs to, it needs to hit the mark. You know, and, and they know that when they do that contract. And it's like the That's permit. That's good news. Well, <laughs> I the, agree. And the permit, you know, you can amend the permit once you get it. I don't think anybody got a permit when they put that roof over that arena over there, what that roof's going to do when it starts shedding water around here and it ain't got nowhere to go to the ball fields. I think that statement was, well, uh, Mr. Perry will work on it later and try and get it to a canal. But the thing here is, and this is just my opinion and everybody's got one, that they sit on. So, <laughs> you know, there was due diligence that should have been done in that contract. And it says it's an interlocal agreement. And Mr. McKinley stated at the workshop that it should be leased to a governmental ent exactly. entity. Exactly. exactly. So they're not. Y'all keep him hawing around about this. The two people that's got their ass in about this is Presley and Ahern. And they, we need to get the press over here and we need to let them take some of this but because <clears throat> the church going, beer drinking, everybody that's in here, they're holding up your kids. And this is for the kids. You know, there was a statement made to me one time, everybody seems to like you over here. I don't know if everybody likes me, but everybody respects me because I'll tear your rear end up in the public. And that's what needs to happen. Andrew, do you know that after the CDEDC started, that the chamber was opened back up? I think they got some grants and they made Charles, uh, Carl Perry the president of it for a little while. <clears throat> Isn't that, uh, I, I'm a, I can't use the word I really want to, but <clears throat> you know that's against the law. That's fraud. You know, I, I don't know, but I got to I never have been or have been a member or a participant in the Blades County Chamber. Well, I know it wasn't the chamber, it was, but the same people are in it. The same people did it. Okay, so when you talk about that, why in the ball field, there's wording in the thing that if you ever need it, you can take it. So nobody wants to take the ball field and build a school over there. We weren't going to build a school in front of it because of the sewer system, you know. Plus, it's right next to the major highway. <clears throat> the common denominator around here is the name. I don't know why a school would give their property. Okay, now the jail, this, the city was given the, the block where the jail is for recreation by a family, and then they traded to the county. I mean, one mistake leads into another one, and someday it's got to stop, you know? I'm reading right here in the contract, and I agree, but I wasn't going to make this big no, deal. No, I thought I'm, we could revisit it. We don't need anybody's position. Permission. The position that we have is our responsibility, education is first, the land use is for education. We don't have to ask for that 50, 50 feet. We can take it and redraw the boundaries. It says so in our contract. Yeah, I would. It's like I said. I, didn't, I mean, I, I came in and this is nice, build a, build a school but we don't have to have this. Also. Education, the land use is for education first. Well, and, and that's the thing. I agree with you, Miss. Uh, well, no. Ms. It's in their contract. You know. In, the con in your contract, it's in there. But I don't right understand here. how it was okay to give away the property rights on it for 99 years. And everybody, what, they, what they're what they doing to y'all 
Is they're making y'all the bad person? Well, that was done before us. Yeah. No, so but they're, trying, right, to they're trying to make you the bad guy. We're trying to fix it. Yeah, nobody wants to get rid of Tony. But no, none I don't of them either. want to do anything about it. <coughs> but so, I want her 50 feet to build our school. I'd go in there and take the whole thing. Well, no, we're not going to do that. But Thank we you, don't George. need it. But, but, but it the is the land use is for education first. Y'all are afraid to say them, I'm not. Thank you. It, it probably would be better if we didn't mention names I'm in our not that. just for libel. Mr. McKinley, is that? Crystal. Right. I mean, that's really not an issue. You know, it's okay. reasonable okay. political okay. discourse. Okay. They're not accusing the them of crimes the or anything. It may be hurtful, but it's the truth. I do believe 501c3, you can look up their financial statements. Mm -hmm. You can find out what they make on child care because it is an income where they would have to report that. That's first of all. Chris, I understand the point. You want to move forward, go forward. With I get it. But as the EDC members, I don't understand. It's a political, legal extortion that you're doing. You refuse to give up something that doesn't belong to you anyway. It never has belonged to you. Just because you picked up that land and you ran with the Chalamega does not make it legally yours. You're not a government entity. You're a 501c3. That is not a government entity. That's a nonprofit organization. To come in, and, and you're talking about it, Ms. Pierce, it's education first. It, it's we're not putting our education. It's in, it's in there. We're not putting education first. You said 80% of the committee is the same one Chamber of Commerce because we haven't had any other com companies come into town <laughs> to add to the EDC. That's right. So we haven't done nothing with EDC except Chalamega. <clears throat> it is education first. If you live in this county and you think that that 50 foot is overriding and your right to that 50 foot is more important than education, then I got news for you guys. Y'all in a lot of trouble. Because what brings business to this county is educated people who work and build their own businesses and bring them in. You ain't going to get them if you don't want education or you won't be getting it from this county. That's what our schools should be looking at. I'm sending kids off to Fort Myers. Not send them down to Miami, Orlando. Or Oak Joby. Or Oak Joby. <laughs> we send up business from Oak Joby. I know. From Glades. We need to keep the stuff in our community. And again, I think it's just, it's it's a political, no offense, legal extortion. Cheers. This is the way it is. We're not going to revisit it. You either go this way, or we're going to hold up your school system. Maybe George is right. I, I it's in the least. It, it says education first. We so have the maybe responsibility. George is right. Maybe yeah. Dr. Barfield needs to sit down with the press and explain them what the EDC is doing. Well, it's they don't have the right. the right of our students to get an education in a safe building and save this board and this district and our taxpayers money. It's to say that we've got this extra 50 feet, we'll give it to you, but it's on our terms and our terms only. We'll take this to court. And I've talked to several attorneys about this, because me and Barfield's talked about it. You got a lot better 60% chance because nothing has ever gave them the right to take that property to begin with. That's right. Nothing has ever gave them the right to overstep that boundary. If you sign that, you will not revisit in five years. You will not revisit in 10 years. You won't revisit in 20 years. They're going to come back with the same thing. You signed it. Now you can give us complete control of it. It's a 99-year lease till 2084. Use some common sense. Put your students in your education first. If it puts school off six months, it puts it off six months. But what if we lost the funding? You're not going to lose the funding. I'm going to be in order to Tallahassee on Monday anyway. So. Start building the other end of the school, Crystal. I mean, you can do anything. We're not going to lose you, funding. You, you, got it. you have to do exactly what the plan is. It's education first. You guys should be looking at that education first. You should be looking at EDC, what small businesses you're going to bring to our community that comes from the school district, that is educated at our school district, not where you're going to bring them in from later on. That's what bothers me the most. Mm -hmm. It's an economic development council. It's a 501c3. It's not a government entity. And it's controlling our school board and our elementary school where we're going to put it. And then you ask about Chalonica funds. It's 501c3. They're getting tax dollars every year from the county commissioners and the city council. The insurance is not paid by the EDC. He just said it's paid for by the city. 
but yet they won't pay what Chavanica pays. What do they make off Chavanica? It's transparency. You guys are transparent. You guys film your meetings. You guys open it up to the public. It's transparency. Make them be as transparent as you are. Thank you. Thank you, Sue. I appreciate your uh, passion about it, and I appreciate I your comments. Absolutely. Yes. So Did you I, want to address him? No, I would okay. just like to say our initial, what got this started was we went and asked for 50 feet. Mm -hmm. That's what how everything got started was we were asking for 50 feet. In this, they are giving us the 50 feet so that we can move forward. That's what we requested. That's what they went off of. They didn't go off of anything else. We didn't request the other stuff that isn't on here. Our request was 50 feet. That's what this document is from our request. Do well, we did ask for some other things. Crystal asked for a five-year revisit. Yeah. Or five year. Yeah. I we think asked for it a year ago. And, and I just want to say yes. this. <laughs> we're we're, we're going to cut this off in just okay. a minute. So okay. if anybody so has time to say that, my comments are very quick. I, I'm going to say this. Wait, just to 50 feet. I had to go get this because I wanted to confirm this. This is the length. 50 feet is the length of an extension cord. 50 feet. We're talking 50 feet is the length of a garden hose. We're letting, and I say we, the board, the we're we're talk we're not talking about taking the Chalamica grounds. We're talk we're all we're asking, we're not and we're asking an entity that claims to be the successor for our own property. And to me that is not that is not common sense. Fifty feet. If we were asking, I could understand and I appreciate Andrew coming and and speaking on behalf of the EDC. If we were as as a board sitting here saying we're going to take half that property, or the lot. I would expect the halls to be packed, the of seats course. to be packed, because we're doing something that truly would affect Chalanitka in the future. Chalanitka is a, it's we all love it, we especially if you've grown up here. But it's let's say it's a two week, it's a two day event, but let's say it's a two week event. This school, the number one economic development for a county is school Schools. is a is a school site. That's right. We're going to bring in a fifty plus million dollar building, of with an impact to our county, your bank, mm -hmm. over fifty million dollars that our county hadn't seen in years, and we're saying because of fifty feet, we're going to say no. Not at all. I mean, but you're saying either you you're either saying you can have the 50 feet if you name a su successor. Okay, what if we say we'll name you successor long enough, and as soon as we get our 50 feet, we we aren't you're not the successor any longer. Well, I, is that something I, you consider? I'm here to present the right. agreement on behalf of the board Correct. of the EDC. But would okay, you do you I, think they would consider that? We would consider anything. I cannot speak to what individuals will say or pass any more than any one individual could speak for the entire board of the school board. Right? You take action in a meeting as a board. We do the same. Correct. The EDC was, this request was mm -hmm. presented to the EDC in October of this year. Was okay. the first time a request was presented to the EDC. I think individuals were approached. Mm -hmm. Individuals have been talked to for a long period of time. As I said in my comments, there are a wide range of opinions and feelings between a lot of individuals about this issue. At the end of the day, as chairman of the EDC, we voted mm -hmm. to approve this as a proposal Sorry. to move past this item and keep the spirit of the 99-year the lease intact. Okay. So, um, I have, oh, you have next okay. comment for okay. So, as a teacher at the elementary school, in 1985, when this agreement was made, I was graduating high school at the old high school. Um, I also went to kindergarten at our little school. Miss um, Thompson spoke at a staff meeting we had not too long ago about our school is our community school. 
you know, the kids here, they don't have a choice. That's the school they go to, okay? We have um, members that work here. We have teachers. We have um, staff members in this building that choose not to send their kids to our school. They send them to Clewiston, to the Christian school, um, to other schools because they don't think our school's good enough. Okay, um, I beg to differ. I stand up for my little school. We have good teachers and we have good kids and they deserve that school. So my question to you, as the person coming here, Mr. Kaus, representing the EDC, when they first asked you for 50 feet, why? Why did you say no? I never have never said no. Why did the board say no, Mr. Patterson? I'd like to know what you have to say because I know that you were at these meetings. So the board has never said no to to a proposal for the 50 feet. Then why are we here? If you'd have said yes, this would be a non-issue. Because before we were asked for the 50 feet, okay. we were asked, were we the, were we the party? Who is the, who is the tenant of the oh, lease? I, I, okay. Yes, I have the email from January from, from uh, Mr. McKinley's office. That was the first question. Who is the tenant? Who is the organization that is the tenant on this lease since okay. the chamber okay. let's does say, not appear to exist? Okay, anymore. let's say you have that and that's true and that's fine. Again, why? Why what? Why would you not say absolutely? This is for the kids. This is for our community school. Why would you not immediately say, of course, I mean, that's your land. Of course, we're going to give you the 50 feet. It doesn't impact Chalamanca at all. Why would you hold up the building of a school for our community because of a 99-year lease that you want to say, and you're, you want to say we're the beneficiary of the chamber. Nobody cares. You know what I care about? My, these kids over here that don't have a choice, that they get a new school. Our roof leaks every day. Every day, our roof leaks. Okay. Well, I, I feel like you're creating a false no, decision like that, that, that we're in an opposition okay. to the school. And no. there's no one that's yes, in there is. opposition. Because you're there right. may be individuals, absolutely. No, 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 no. You came with, we'll give you this if you sign this. There should be no if. You should say, absolutely, here's your 50 feet. What is the big deal? I represent an organization. I, 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 I I'm not going to speak for them. We have I'm, not, I'm not empowered to make Jeffrey, this deal. Excuse, me. Excuse, me. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. I hate to do this, but I think your time is up. And I feel like you're attacking our another person. Well, audience. somebody needs to ask these questions okay. because you're not doing yeah, it. I, and it's your job. I've already done it's it. your job, Tammy. I've already no. Done it. It's your job. Tammy. It's your job. Your Tammy. job. Your job. And your job. Tammy. That's my That's school. It. I just I would just like to clarify that when I did attend the EDC meeting, the last meeting, I did express that we were as a board disappointed that when this request first went to them that they did not immediately say yes. I did express that to the EDC board. But I, and again, and I'm going to repeat what I said earlier. I think it was because there are members of the EDC who did not want the school bill on that property and they thought they could hold us up. That's exactly why it's not supposed to be a private organization that we have an agreement with. It's supposed to be government. Okay, we're going to hear from one more citizen and then we're going to move uh, along. I think everybody on the board and everybody in the audience that wants to, if you want to speak, please fill out a card. Yeah, it, um, it, it was just to answer a question because I was asked a question and the question was why, you know, why is it written that way? And I believe it was written that way because much like we had said before, we can't grant something if you don't acknowledge us as a grantor. I think that's a simple answer for it. We was asked, why didn't, why did you just say, you know, why didn't you just do it? Well, how can we do it if you don't say that 
we're the ones that can drain it. So what you're saying is legally you can't do it because you're not you're not the property owner. Okay, Stu, so just just hang that's on. Exactly okay. the way that sounds. That's right. Exactly right. Exactly, exactly back to what I said. Okay. We don't need their permission. We're just going to take. It. Jeffrey, do you have anything else? No, I'm just filling really. Out. Really. Okay. All right, we're going to move on with one the agenda. Oh, and that's the last one. I will take that. Okay. I'll keep my own timer. Yeah, and we we neglected. I don't know whose job that is else. to keep time, but I think it's Mr. McKinley's. I'm not sure. <laughs> I, didn't, I wasn't prepared for that. <laughs> okay, I'll do it. I got it. You got it. Thank you. I got mine. Watch. You don't okay. have to. This Thomson. Thank you. Please go ahead, Lauren. The only other thing I want to remind you of is the great part about. The great marker of being a leader is being able to be a devil's advocate. All this would have come about, and this would have been known, if the actual location of the school was told before the county, city, and school board communal meeting that you had at the community office. I've gone to every meeting that y'all have ever had probably the past two years, workshops. I mean, y'all have all seen my face many, many times. I've had private conversations with different ones of you at different points in time. Some that don't want to talk to me just walk by, and that's fine too, because my opinion is loud and somewhat not agreed with everybody else. The only thing I want to remind you of, you're probably not going to have this opportunity for the purchase and the building of a school like this ever again, but this issue, this vitriol that's coming from different places and different people could have been actually publicly addressed with a public discussion about its location. As a mama, a teacher, and a, a county resident, y'all did not. You did not. And as a mommy, a teacher, and a county person that pays taxes in this county, I don't want my school there. And I've made that known to every person that I've ever talked to, any person outside of this building, in this building, and I've said that. And Dr. Barfield and I have talked about it at length as to why I don't. And that's my opinion, the same way George said it. Everyone has an opinion, I'm allowed to have mine. But this would have come up, and every issue with every location would have come up. Y'all didn't have to do that with the high school. You didn't have to do it with West Lakes. But it would have been a great opportunity for the community to come together and say, what do y'all think is best? I also am part of the GCYAA board now. I've volunteered myself for that. And I'm sorry, coming from me as a mama whose kids play t-ball, I would much rather you put the school there and take them down and build some newer ones because that place is tour. We need newer builds. But I, yet all that would have come out in a conversation, in a community-wide conversation about the location. That is the reality of where you find yourself sitting tonight. That the issue with that one happens to be the 50 feet you need. The issue with the ball fields would be dealing with the city and the county. The issue with the highway is people's lack of security that they may feel. There's issues and problems with each one of them, but not everyone was properly explored. explored. The only rendering that was provided at the city county meeting was the one location that it is now. And I don't know why the school has to be there. Extra traffic on West Ave with everybody coming commercially up that road. I'm not really excited about that for car pickup and exiting there, you know, whatever. But I do want a new school, and I don't want anyone to think that I don't think any party in this, EDC included, does not want a new school. Now, exactly like Andrew said, people have different of opinions on both sides of it. But the reality is that it probably could have been a little bit more discussed if it was a properly brought to city, the county, the teachers, the staff, everybody. There are still people to this day that I say where the school's going and they have no idea. And I understand your point that 15 be. seconds. The school board meetings are public, they're open. If you want to come, come. And that is a true and valid point. But the reality is, there's a lot of things that are public and people don't go to. So that's right. And that's their fault. <laughs> Good job. Thank you, Lauren. Appreciate it. All right, anyone else? All right, we're going to move along to action item 4.1 to approve the attorney to take legal action regarding lease with Glades County Economic Development Council. So is this where I make my recommendation? Okay. Um, that could be the motion, I guess. My recommendation is that um, we do not sign the interlocal agreement with EDC. Okay. Any discussion? Anybody else on the board want to say anything? Mm -hmm. Do we have Do we have a motion for either the uh, are these two different things? This is yes, that's what Mr. Kaus brought. This is four no, that's what we're talking about. Four point one. This is not on the agenda. The the lease agreement is not on the agenda that was brought. So at this point in the agenda, um, we could accept a motion for that. You could. Yeah. Okay. You could 
Add it to the agenda by majority vote. Yes, you could do that. It's just add the add the ad adoption of the lease to the agenda. That would be two actions. Add it to the agenda and take action on it. Okay. So I guess I would ask for a motion to amend the agenda to include the addition of the interlocal agreement amendment. Hold on just a second. Hold on just a second. The way it's written is to approve the term, and I'm saying I, I'm not I'm not recommending that. So, you, are you saying that Crystal needs to, if she wants to make it go to a vote, what does she need to do? That's what we're talking about. That's okay. we've she, had the discussion. There's no voting on that. Right. So she wants to add it. She wants to add action. On when we, that item, on right, the lease when we item. leave the meeting tonight, we need to do. You can. You okay, could, so hold on. So it, it it does say to approve the attorney to take legal action regarding the lease. Exactly. So I want to. I would like to recommend to the board that we do so. Okay. In doing so, we would not be signing what the EOC or EDC has presented until more discussion is held. Right. That's my recommendation. Right, right. okay. Yeah. So what I'm saying is that when we leave the meeting tonight, we need to do one of two things. We either need to take legal action against them or we need to sign the agreement with them. Exactly. That's so or signing the agreement with them is not really listed on our agenda as an option. My assessment of the board in the beginning, they may have changed their minds by now, but in the beginning, I felt like everybody was okay with that. But I'm trying to figure out through parliamentary procedure how to open the floor for a motion to sign the amendment from the EDC. Okay. And okay. should it come after 4.1 or, pro you know, that's where I'm at. That has to come before that now. This would be the point where you would consider amending the agenda. Okay. okay, and in order to move forward on some basis, so you have basically three practical options. One of them is to adopt the lease as submitted and as written, to authorize chaos and destruction and litigation, that's another option, or do nothing, that's a third option, okay? If you wanna do the first one, you need to get the board to agree to modify the agenda to add this version of the lease that's been submitted, you know, which you have the discretion to do. Uh, so that's two motions, like I mentioned before. Amend the, amend the agenda to add the lease and take action on that. Let's go there. All so right, you, need a motion, you need a motion to amend the agenda, adding the lease as submitted by the EDC. Okay. So moved. Okay, do we have a second? Second. Okay, so the motion was by Ms. Pierce. Thank you. The second was by Ms. Allen. <laughs> All right, we have a motion and a second. Any discussion? To agenda. You're just Trust adding it to the agenda. agenda. To amend the agenda. A motion and a second to amend the agenda to add the First Amendment from the EDC. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, motion carries. All right. Where does it go in the agenda? Does it go now? Now is action on that item that you've just okay. added to the right. added to the. Uh, okay. Do we have a motion to approve the First Amendment to interlocal agreement and lease with the EDC? Any motion to approve? Second. Okay. We have a motion by Ms. Pierce. We have a second by Ms. Clement. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. What was this motion? Okay. A motion to, Patty, restate your motion. To? It was to assign the agreement. Yes. To approve, yes. The, to approve to the amendment approve the to the lease as submitted. The EDC, as submitted. Was that what you meant to no. motion, Patty? No. no I, I, okay. Then we should vote on it. Yes, but you said okay to talk about it. I'm it saying okay to talk about it. Now we have to vote on it. Yeah, that's what she's doing. Okay. okay. I'm still trying to figure out what, what is the second motion? Okay, the second motion, I asked for, do we have a motion to approve the agreement with the EDC? Tonight? As submitted. As submitted. Do we have a motion for that? Patty said yes. 
but if the motion was to put it on, we already did that. We already did that one. Now you've you've now we're voting on the actual issue. We haven't voted yet. Well, now we are. And so, you, do you want to submit that motion? I want to submit the motion, but I don't want to vote yes. Okay, you did okay. submit the motion. That's fine. She's the motion. A, okay. She, okay. Made the motion. she made the motion. She made the motion. All five of us had to vote. Okay. Yeah. And Ms. Clement seconded. seconded. All, right. All right. So that's the question before the board now. now. Right. All right. Right now. So all in favor of signing the agreement tonight as with submitted. EDC as submitted, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Yes. Yes, ma'am. Drake and Clement were ayes. Okay. All right. So, um, motion does not carry. <laughs> All right. So we'll move to action item 4.1. Approve the attorney to take legal action regarding lease with Glades County Economic Development Council. Do we have a motion? So moved. Second. We have a motion by Ms. Pierce. We have a second by Ms. Allen. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Is that five eyes? No. No. How many eyes? Who said aye? Aye. Four. Everyone but me. Four. All right. Motion carries. Do you have any announcements, Dr. Barfield, before we adjourn? I do not. Okay, I'll adjourn the meeting. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. So, hold back. <laughs> I may not have understood that last motion. The, that was to move forward with number four. Release the hounds. To okay. approve the attorney to take legal action I, regarding the lease. I do not agree to on that. That is an A for me. So it's two, two, three. Two, three. It still doesn't carry. <laughs> Okay, you good? Yeah, I'm sorry. That's okay. That's okay. I wonder why you did that. Okay. All right. All right. The meeting's adjourned.